Welcome to SelfDiscoveryMedia.com, where we discover the communities that are making a difference in the lives of others. Our self-discovery is something we are all making on our life's journey. Here you will find the people that will be your guidance, that will be your inspiration, that will be there for you in support on your journey of life. Do enjoy. Our next show is... Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Your Health is Your Choice, right here at selfdiscoverymedia.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and my guest today is Zid Gaza Hillman, and we're going to be talking about your health today. He says it's all done in small steps. You know, he's a step advocator, small step advocator. We don't have to take leaps and bounds when we want change. Sometimes just the toe in front of the toe can get us where we need to go. He also has this wonderful six truths to be happy. Um, he's a health manifesto. Um, he's raising healthy parents. The small steps helps you with less stress and a thriving family. His approach is to exact the opposite of quick fixes and diets and exercise. Uh, DVDs focusing rather on long-term and, and sustainable change and increased self-esteem and confidence in the process. It's actually very apropos that at the present moment, um, we are in the year of the ox and the ox is very loyal, very true, very sturdy, you know, very just plodding away, plowing that field. Uh, no big bells and whistles, but solid you can count on. And this is the kind of coach that he is. You can count on him. He's not going to push you beyond the, what you need to do. And you'll get there. You will get there with those small steps. He has a podcast, What Sid Thinks podcast. And we'll be talking about that as well. He is also an author approaching the a natural, a healthy manifesto and raising healthy parents, which I love the idea of that. Um, you know, we look at our parents, mine are gone uh, now, but I live with an 87 year old who is healthier than me. Although she is a sugar addict, salt <laughs> addict, vinegar addict and, and orange Pico tea. And I think there's something in the orange Pico tea that kind of <laughs> preserves them. But, uh, you know, I look at her and I think it's, it, and she just eats so much of all of that stuff and yet she still keeps on ticking. And it's like, how? Yeah. Uh, because we know that if we do, we're going to pay the price. We're going to have heart problems. We're going to have diabetes. We're going to have everything else. And a lot of that comes into the foods we eat and the mindset and the stress that we live <laughs> under. So welcome to the show, show, Sid. We need you right now. <laughs> oh, good. Well, I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to talk about it. Yeah, the Raising Healthy Parents is about is actually about raising yourself as a parent. So that that's the message there. Not not necessarily your parents, but as, as a parent, taking care of yourself first. So that's just the message on that. I, well, I would actually think that my 30-year-old's kids would actually think that's titled for them in yes. raising me. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's much about living the example as a parent. I'm a parent, yeah. a parent of three, so that was the, the idea of that book. But anyways. Yeah, yeah. and that's a, a very you know good point because this is something we're always saying to everybody, you need to oxygenate yourself before you right. do anyone else. And exactly right. um, it is so easy, and I, I succumb to this in raising my children, running around for them and doing everything, that my health, you know, kind of became on the back burner. That's Didn't right. have time for it. That's right. Right. That's exactly, and, I, I've used those exact words. And parents can't afford to put their, their own happiness and health on the back burner. It's not even good for the kids. No, you know? no, yeah. no. And I can attest to that. No, yeah. it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, exactly. You end up really sick. Yeah. And now you feel even more guilty because now you feel a burden on your kids. Yeah, they have to take care of you. That's exactly yes, right. Yes, yeah. exactly. exactly. So, right. you know, it, it, prevention is better than cure. That's right. That's and right. the positive attitude. That's right. Which yeah. is so hard to do. <laughs> it, 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 well, and, and, in, and in the book, you know, uh, I, the, first it's split in two halves. The first half is philosophy. The second half is reality, which is how do you get this done as a busy mm -hmm. parent? And that's where my small steps approach comes in because, you know, oftentimes the idea of any kind of change is overwhelming and we don't want to mm -hmm. even take it on. Oh my gosh, too much. And, yeah. uh, but when you can change even your mindset around that, you can make leaps and bounds in, in very subtle ways. And it's mm -hmm. a very cool thing as I'm coaching people. So, yeah. So um, it's all about that whole picture of mindset before anything else. I think we're in a world where everything must be instant. Just download an app and it will all happen. Yeah. You know, just manifest it and Amazon yeah. will deliver it. That's right. And, you know, it doesn't work like that, folks. 
You no, know? not not happiness does. Uh, no. I mean, look at look at look at our level levels of if we have the slightest bit of dis- discomfort, headache, we take Tylenol, it goes away. We've in the West, especially, we've been led to a, an expectation of immediate alleviation of, of discomfort. Yes. The problem with the problem with that is a Pepto Bismol will cure stomachache, but the change in diet is what actually gets you to the point right. of health, and that's a long term endeavor. Every time you cannot hack that, and so we can fake it with medications, and we can fake it with junk food, and sort of make ourselves feel happy in moments. But if we really want a long that my whole new book is six truths is simply about it's a more of a happiness manifesto if you, um, based on my health manifesto in the first but yeah, it's, it's a mindset it's like it, it takes hard work to live a good life and then you can't get around that that's just what it is and so um, you can make it easier on yourself about that or you can make it harder on yourself about that but it is about the hard work of, of living a good life it doesn't matter how rich you are no how no. many how many people following you on social media sometimes it's the uh, opposite of that yeah, you, I mean, you know, yeah. yeah, because the stress of trying to maintain that popularity mm-hmm. or maintain the riches. I've interviewed many a person that was at the top of their game, yeah. and they say, I was a slave to to maintaining that position. Yeah. And I lost my family and I lost my health. Oh, yeah. oh no, they were happier right? when it was a struggle. And, and so I, th- they gave up everything and yeah. redirected themselves into something that was more meaningful and uh, yeah. more purposeful and they are now more enriched that's right. and enriched living more of, of an abundant life yeah that's right. exactly that's exactly right yeah, yeah. But, but sometimes it needs the cosmic two by four to come along you know you know it can hit with the heart attack it can hit with the diabetes it can hit yeah. with something else and and uh, you know right now with the with the global pandemic is it's a kind of a reset for humanity altogether right. isn't it that's right. yeah and you know i think you and i are in the same boat where i i'm just trying to get people to clue in to how great this can be so that they don't ever get to the art attack yes. and if that's if that's what it takes for somebody that's fine but the fact of the matter is it's a better option to not let it get that far and my my training is is not not to teach people how to be robots and never have an off day. It's how do you, right. respond, how do you respond from the off day? Right. How, how, how much do you let yourself go? Do you notice, okay, I'm starting to fall off a little bit. Let me get back on track before it gets too much. Yes. And, that, and that's, that's an awareness question. I mean, that's a, that's a, can you be engaged in your life day to day to not let that go too far? Most of my clients are, a history of yo-yo dieting. They lost the way they gained it back. They lost, or the DVD plan. They did this and then they stopped doing it for you know all or nothing. And I go, okay, enough all or nothing because people yeah. who are all or nothing end up doing nothing. So yeah, you, if you or can getting you, nowhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you go you go all in, you burn out, and you quit, and then you yeah. feel like a failure. Yes. But the model the model is flawed. The fundamental yeah. model is flawed. If you change the game entirely and say, well, I'm not going to go all in. I'm going to manage my stress along the way so that, that I can create lasting habits then you build the good life you want. But that, again, that takes work and attention. You just said the magic word, manage. Mm-hmm. Everything in life that we need to do is management, right? right? You know, no company is is going to succeed without the right kind of management. That's right. You know, a, a family household running a family, we are managing it. That's correct. You know, and sometimes we're managing it at the end of the skin of our teeth. And, but if we have a good management plan in there, right. we're not going to get overwhelmed. And when we do get overwhelmed, we actually have the skills and the tools to deal with that. Yeah. Right. And very often it's just simply the deep breath. <laughs> well, exactly. Yourself, well, exactly. Right? Yeah, it's funny because I, <laughs> I just became a certified uh, oxygen advantage breathing coach. So I'm definitely bringing in the, the, that whole training, but I've used the management analogy mm. a lot in my work and podcast and everything, because what, what is, what is an effective manager? Somebody yeah. who she or he is calm, cool, can yes. make decisions, can seek it, pers- have perspective. Those are things that a man, we need a manager who can sort of be okay, you know, not be swayed emotionally, can sort of take control. That's what we need in terms of our own management, our yes. own stress management is we need to be more prefrontal cortex decision, less reactive and more active in our lives, decisions yeah. that we make instead of reactions. That goes for food too. I'm a nutritionist, so people mm. come to me to talk about food, but I go, this isn't about food. This mm-hmm. is about how you are when you get around food. If you can yeah. change how you are, you have a better chance of making good decisions most of the time that are in line with how you want to eat. You know, And, and yeah. so nobody ever chooses to binge. They just do it because they've had a bad day at work and they feel bad overall and they make that reactive choice but if you can change that mindset all of a sudden their choices fall in line mm. and that that's management that is being yeah. a a cool a cool operator in a way a calm cool operator most of the time not perfect but most no. of the time and i think that's kind of one of the first skills you know um i've, I've coached myself and one of the first things i would always tell people is learn to breathe just learn oh, yeah. to breathe, you know, yeah. take the deep breaths, you know, you yeah. need at least three, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. you want to oh, get that chakra, that spine, you know, in alignment and, and, you know, you have to 
exhale the stress and just That's inhale right. the possibilities. And, you know, you can think so much clearer. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm, I'm an asthmatic. And at the present moment, obviously, with COVID, it's, you know, oh, you know, yeah, and, it, sure. and uh, I've been suffering a cold for this last week. Mm-hmm. And in, in the moment, you know, your brain goes there. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. Is it? Is it? No, it's yeah. a oh, yeah. cold. Oh, yeah. It's know? making us crazy. No, it's making us, it's making us crazy. We have the yes. littlest, littlest headache and we're like, it's it. It's it. Yes. It's happening. It. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's, it's made us all crazy, you know, yeah. hard, and, and, and rightfully so, but all the more reason to take steps, however minimal to sort of yeah. keep your, I was an asthmatic for my first 24 years of my life. I changed my diet a little bit and haven't had asthma since. And, um, but I know how that is. And I know how people were living with it now. Um, you know, it makes you feel more sensitive and it makes you feel like if you get the pandemic, you're going to be in worse shape and it's, it's fear. It's, you know, it's yeah. horrible. And it's horrible to live in fear for, for anybody. And, and, uh, there's enough fear already before the pandemic, you know, you read the yes. news and you can't help but be <laughs> frightened, you know? Um, and, and so, yeah. And so it's, it's, it's in the moments. I think that, you know, we all want to feel less stressed, but I think the mistake is made when we think, okay, I need to go on a 10 day retreat. Mm-hmm. That'll fix everything. And that's great, but it's not going to fix everything. So yeah. if we can manage how to do the little things in the context of our lives, we win, we win most days. If we can figure out how to make moments in the, in the lives that we live, we need breaks, vacations. Those are great, but yes. we got to figure out how to do better day to day, how to manage that fear and stress day to day, how to not let it rule us. Right. Um, and that is, that's the struggle. I had a wonderful um, Michel Pascal, um, a monk, um, who would take people into Times Square when Times Square was Times Square. <laughs> and, and it was, you're going to learn to meditate here. You're oh, going to be it. the mountain here. I love it's it. It's all very well meditating in silence. But what do you yeah. do when you get around the noise? That's right. You need to meditate or learn to switch off the noise around you wherever you are. I love so that so much. If you're in a static situation, if you're in a, a literally a noisy situation, is how do you get back into your core, into your That's center? Right. Yeah. And we're always teaching people. I'm, I'm a huge advocate of silence. Yeah. You know, because I think we hear so much messaging in our silence, but it isn't about the meditation in silence and then noise comes along and you don't know what to do. You with can't it. do it. I know. I know. No, it's absolutely true. It's funny. I read a book, which I cite my, in my new book, the six truths book, but it's called lead yourself first. And it's a, it's a very, you know, he, talks about stories of leaders and how they've, you know, found mom- they, they use and use moments of, so- of solitude, but, mm-hmm. but, and that's fine. But I love the way that he defines solitude, the author, um, which is that it's free from inputs from other minds. Mm-hmm. And, 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 right. So it doesn't mean silence. It means no. that you're not actively putting something into your head. It means you're, you don't have headphones on. You're not reading the news. You're in the subway, but you're in solitude because you're creating that moment for yourself in, even in a, even in, like you said, in Times Square craziness, like you said, it's, it's easy enough to meditate in a temple when somebody else is making you food and it's very quiet and it's very conducive, but you got to get back. That's yeah. And that's great. But again, happiness is what you do most of the time. And unless you're living in that temple, most of the time, you've got to come back to your life. That means you're raising a family. That means you have a job. That means you have a spouse. That means you have all these things that you're, that, that are pulling your mental energy and they're many of them positive, but you've got to figure out how to maintain a core grounding in that context. And that is, that. that's a, I love that, I, that she's brilliant because that's exactly what is it. Can you meditate in the world? Let me see, yes. that, let me see that happen uh, because yeah. then, then you've done something. I go for walks in nature. The wind is my friend. I love mm-hmm. the way it just blows from my hair, clears, clears all the cobwebs. I love water. It's my conduit. And I love trees, you know, they're my friends. And sure. when I can get around all three of them at the same time, and, oh. you know, I, I, I don't want any uh, voice chatter. I just want to hear That's the right. trees and the wind and the water because That's they're right. going to tell me everything I need to know. And there is an equilibrium about it. That's and right. I think it's, we, we have to look at where is our peace, mm-hmm. right? You know, yeah. is, nature is a wonderful provider of that. And, you know, if we can't get out into nature as much as, we, as we'd like to, then where do we find our peace? You know, uh, and it's not a question of, again, you, you've got kids running around. And we, mm-hmm. You know, my daughter's about to give birth to my first grandchild. And, nice. you know, she's, uh, I always say to, to moms that, you know, a 
busy look at their mothers and go, oh, mother, and then, you know, wait, did you become one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally, totally true. <laughs> totally different scenario now. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I remember my niece saying, yes, and the kid will live on this side of the compartment and it will do this and that. My sister and I looked at each good other luck. and go, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good luck, good luck, <laughs> yeah. good luck. We all have great plans. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and yeah. kids are tornadoes. They are, yeah. you know, and again, that management skill comes in there. But the taking the time for your own, solitude or your Different. own peace of mind whether it's Different. in the chaos or out of the chaos stress is a number one killer because it brings on all the other dis-ease that's right and we don't know how to handle stress society do and right. this last four or five years i'm in canada you know you're in uh -huh. the states you've been yep. really in the thick of it yeah. hysteria oh yeah has, tornado has oh, been yeah so high yeah, yeah. that you know people are being like this and oh yeah they had it on the news the other day that so many people are clenching their oh, drawers when they're sleeping sure right that is yeah. causing so many problems and i realized i was oh wow you know? yeah yeah and, you know it's ha oh, let's just de-stress let's yeah. just de-stress yes and, yeah and the important thing is to understand you don't have to go away to do that you don't have no. to set up set aside an hour and a half you can set aside literally five breaths and that'll mm -hmm. do it and i actually go the step further to say as a parent if you can learn these kinds of tools the small as small as you need. I don't have a fixed size in the world, but as small as doesn't overwhelm you, right? Um, mm -hmm. But the, not only do you get the benefit of managing your own stress, but you set an example for your child yeah. to see how that's done too. And so if you, you know, parent, I'm a father of three and my wife and I both work full time. And um, so we're busy, you know? And mm -hmm. so it's like, you know, we have to maintain to be good parents. It's about maintaining our own peace, as you said, when we can, um, but also showing our kids that even in chaos, we can maintain that control and that stress. And that's a, and, and that's a really good message for kids as well to see their, how do their parents handle stress? Yes. How do their parents handle fear? You know, when I speak, when things were open, I would, I speak around the country and my kids have asked me, you know, what is it? Do you get afraid when you go on stage? I go, yeah, every time, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I have a crowd of people and it's, I'm nervous. I want them to yes. know that, that I'm nervous. I want them to know that I'm afraid and that they get to see what I do about that. Right. You know, and, and so it's like, you know, I've, it's managing and guiding, managing and guiding. So that's, yeah. yeah. And I think it's also very, very important that kids know the mom or dad can have a meltdown, that sure. we can have a, a, a period where we're feeling overwhelmed and we just don't know what to do. Yeah. And it's okay for them to come and help us. That's right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, and right. this yeah. is, I think, again, you know, a lot of the old parenting paradigm is uh, don't let the kids see you like this. Or argue you know? even. Like, or don't argue. Let, don't let them see the parents argue as if that's a reality, right? Yeah. You know, but how do, how do the parents argue and how do they, how do they get past it? That's right. the lesson. That's the yes. lesson. Yes. Yeah. And, and it's okay for the kids. The empowerment sure. and permission for the kids to say, what sure. can I do for you? Yeah. Well, parents cut it out because yeah, yeah, sometimes yeah. you just need that external voice. You yeah, know? Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. And I think yeah. uh, you know, I'm a huge advocate for, for children um, on having a voice, on being able to speak out um, and being able to address things that they don't like. And, you know, we as parents like to take everything on and we yeah. forget we're in a family dynamic. Yeah, that's right. All right. And the kids have just as important input. And sometimes they're coming, you know, you, you hear what they have to say and you realize, oh, I didn't realize that rubbed off on you that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, right? I think they notice because I always say like in my Raising Healthy Parents book, it's, it really is more about what you do more than what you say. Yes. So you can say all the right things. You can say, go out, go outside and exercise. But if you're sitting on your butt on the couch mm. and you don't ever exercise, guess what they're going to notice? Yeah. You know, and over time. Even and on they'll a, call you out on it. <laughs> you're, you're darn right. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> right. So, so living the example both serves you and it serves them in a, in a very, very, very profound way. Um, it's a hard, it's a tough pill to swallow. You know, mm -hmm. we don't, we don't want to feel like we're uh, not being a good example, but it doesn't feel good. Um, but that's the name of the game. When you start a family, that's the name of the game. You know, these are, I was just talking to a client today about, you know, she says, I don't like hard work. And I said, well, I think you do. You, you got married and you mm -hmm. had a child on purpose. Those yes. are, you, you know, those are hard work because I know but we do that because the work of those kinds of things, if we were just about easy, we would never have a child because it's very difficult, but what we want is a deeper existence. We want a, mm. a feeling, we want to feel things and be engaged in our lives. And that takes work. Why we think that that shouldn't apply to changes in diet and changes in exercise. I have no idea, but I'm, you know, as a coach, I'm here to say like there, that struggle too. You know, it's, it's, to, you got it. If you want the deeper existence, if you want that feeling of vibrance, this isn't about a scale weight, not even by a long shot. This is even about diabetes. Mm -hmm. This is about feeling good. This is about being engaged in your life and to get people past those sort of six pack abs kind of things yeah. and saying, listen, what do you really want here? 
Is it, yeah. is it really a scale weight? Is it really a number on a scale? Or do you want to be around for your kids and be around to do cool things and have adventures and have a good relationship with your spouse or partner? Like that's really where it's at, you know? And so it's, it's, um, it is, again, I always come back. It's like the hard work, you know, it's the hard work of it, the hard and what, great work of it. And great work, you know, but it doesn't become hard work. The more you get into it, it just mm -hmm. becomes a routine. That's right. But, you know, the other thing I think is very, very important is, you know, the, the emotional and physical energy that we are looking for. Ultimately, um, again, I have, a, I have a disease that zaps my energy. Mm -hmm. And that is the one thing I wish I could get back. Uh -huh, and sure. that is something that, you know, we take for granted. And we don't have full happiness if we, sorry, that's my daughter's, <laughs> I can't get rid of it. It keeps coming out and every- That may be the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> It was her, it was her on, was, online Zoom, um, you know, baby background. shower. <laughs> so good. I mean, it just because it happened right, right then, it was just like, yes. <laughs> That's the energy. <laughs> you manifested it literally in the moment. That was, there and there go. it goes. There and it goes. Now, now I'm depressed again. How did that happen? <laughs> My mood just changed just overnight. It was so weird. But that's actually a point, isn't it? Is that if we're feeling low emotionally, physically on energy, uh -huh. what is going to lift us up? Sure. Right? You know, yeah. and sometimes just silly laughter. You know, I used to, Absolutely. I used to put on, on Queen and We Are the Champions and yeah. the kids and I would sing and dance around dance, yeah. with it, you know, and yeah. it's be silly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lighten yeah, yeah. things up. You can yes. still maintain a routine, a management, yeah. but oh, yeah. please allow time for silly play. I agree. And look what humor does for us in the world, just even yeah. in a pandemic. Like yeah. it's okay to make jokes about things that are tragic. It, it, it is a way that we can process these things. It's yes. a way that we cannot let them beat us. And, yeah. and, you know, and it's like, I see this time and time again with everything, you know, people get on comedians for making jokes about certain subjects. It's like, look, we need to be able to have any levity wherever we can find it. It's the release. It, it, that's right. I mean, yeah. we are holding on so tight that we are, I've been using this, this term recently in the last few days, we're like a powder keg. You know, mm. we're just ready to be set off. The littlest mm. thing is going to blow us up. And if we don't release some of that tension, man, oh man, does it come out in ways that we do not like it to come out in ways. Right. You know, and so that's where the drug and the alcohol, the junk food, things that release that tension, but not in a healthy way. Right. And so uh, we got to figure out how to release the tension in healthy ways. <laughs> you know, and that's, that's the trick, right? You know, going back to diet is that we all have different body types. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there isn't a one size that fits all. I have... Uh, become more of a vegetarian. I'm an 80-20, as I call it. I'm 80% pure vegetables, mm -hmm. vegan. Yep. And then I'm 20% other because occasionally I'll have fish, occasionally I'll have <laughs> chicken and <laughs> cream cheese. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's, you know, my limit. Yeah. Um, and so I don't sweat it, you know, and I think it's also, yeah. you know, in, ha change your diet to, you know, where it's serving you, that's right. that it's really fueling your vehicle properly that's right. uh, that's at full right. maintenance, but don't feel guilty. If, no. if you're going out for dinner and you're going to have something that you normally wouldn't healthy. eat, uh, you know, because our attitude around it, you know, how many people when they go on diets, oh, I went, I went off my diet, I had one spoonful of sugar. Oh, oh no, they're I on everything. The, you know? Yeah, they're holding, well, like I just said, they're holding on too tight. And yes. I, you know, I look, I'm a nutritionist. Mm -hmm. Um I have seen people with very good diets unhealthy because they are holding on too tight. Yes. They, are, they are rigid and they are militant. So you right. know what I do with my clients, my small step clients, but we work into food my client that's just finishing up next week, she said, I, I said, eat something less than healthy tomorrow night on mm -hmm. purpose. And because, yeah. because if I see that people are holding on too tight, I know what's coming, which is that they're going to burn out and they're going to get less than healthy. If they, if they hold on, they're going to burn out through all their, all their willpower is going to be gone. Right. Um, and so how do you make, cause it's again, not about food. It's about being happy. And that yeah. means, you know, look, I've been hundred percent plant-based for 18 years. I've done, I know this research. That's just what I do. It's my asthma has gone because of that, mm -hmm. but I don't eat hundred percent healthy. Mm -hmm. So on, on purpose, you know, so, so, um, you, I've been talking a little bit about blue zones recently. You know, these are the zones around the world that live the longest, have the long, have the most longevity. Okay. They're called blue zones, not one blue zone, except for these Adventist people in, uh, Southern California, but not one blue zone other than they is hundred percent plant-based. Not one, mm -hmm. not one doesn't drink alcohol. They all drink alcohol, things that are, they, but, but 
living a good, happy, healthy life is a bigger picture than food. They have close families. They have less stress overall day to day. They're a little more in touch with nature. They have more positive outlooks and they eat well and they move their bodies, but it's yes. one of the things. And so for some reason, and I know, I know the reason and marketing is very slick about, uh, around, around diet. Yes. And, and, and I did a video on my YouTube channel called um, scare yourself thin. Mm -hmm. And it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a, a satire because if you can, if I can scare you to follow my diet and think that if a drop of oil is going to kill you, that you can't go to a party, you're going to keep coming to me because I'm going to alleviate some sort of stress for you. But that's not a healthy relationship. That's, that's a, that's an unhealthy relationship. Yeah. And so if I can help people be fluid and make their own decisions around food, instead of following, I don't give people diet plans anymore. I did, right. I did that. For, I did that for the first two months of being a nutritionist. Then I quit because I was like, this is not getting people healthy. No. And that was the inspiration for my first book, Approaching the Natural, which has, by the way, one chapter on food and the rest is everything that's not food. Right. Because I, I started seeing people follow my plan and guess what? Burning out and then undoing all the gains they made. I thought this is weird, you know? And so I had to, I crack, I had to crack that nut, figure out a better way to do this. You know, and that was the beginning of my small steps approach back that is 11, 12 years ago. Attitude is huge. Yeah. You know, it's, um, I just flashed to Oprah's 50th birthday and she looked sensational because she'd been, you know, working with a trainer and sure. uh, she'd been on this diet and it was very rigid and she was allowing herself for her birthday, half a glass of champagne. Oh my goodness. I and mean, it's like, hold on too what? tight. No, hold on, <laughs> hold on, hold on too tight. Yeah. A, did, did you hear the uh, 111 year old woman in North Carolina? She's German, but she just moved like when she was 99, she moved to be with her family in North Carolina. Anyways, 111, she just got her vaccine. They interviewed her and they said, what's the secret to a long life? You know what she said? Beer, wine, and good food. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, and, you know, and, and you got all these people. Company. Yeah. That's right. And you got, you got, you got these people holding on so tight to the yes. so-called perfect diet. <clears throat> yeah. And, they're, and, and you interview people who are living longest and they're like, yeah, no, no, not just not that kind of militancy. It's not going to no. deliver you. you know, no, I mean, look, look at Europeans. I mean, there's wine or beer with every meal. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. The whole thing here, what's the big word? Moderation. Yeah, that's right. And yeah, you know, it, North American word time to include everything in extreme. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, for sure. <laughs> and, and the thing about it is on a very physical level, stress was what people don't know and don't understand necessarily. Stress weakens digestion. Yes. And stress weakens the immune system. Yes. So if you are hyper stressed about food, and, and think about food all day. Mm -hmm. Guess what that stress is going to do for you? I don't care how good your diet is. And so that, and so again, as a coach, I'm like, we're not going to talk about food right away. Like I always kick food down. The, the, I always kick the can down the road. I go, we'll talk about that. But, but, but no, we're not doing that. Cause mm -hmm. for, for you right now, you think food is the end all be all, but it's not. So let's talk about everything else. Let's get some creative things that you do. Let's sing and dance. Let's take light mm -hmm. walks. Let's do some breathing. Let's do some journaling. Let's get, and then later in six weeks, we'll start just start the conversation about food because your brain is in a different place than it was before. And now you can handle changes yes. and not go all in and burn yourself out. Okay, good. Now we can talk about food, right? So yeah. it is, it's attitude. It's managing your stress and people go right to the food or right to the exercise, but it's about the stress first and foremost. Yes. Um, I think mean, that's over everything in life. You know, we yes. can, you know, Oh, the glass is half full. Well, it's actually full. It's, but it's half of water, half of air. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. There was uh, another wonderful show I did with uh, Yashu Yukomaki, um, the Emoto water experiment. Do you know that experiment? I don't think um, so. Three glasses of water in three different rooms, and one is ignored, one is given. Oh, oh I, read this, I, read, I read the book. I right. read the book, and then they analyzed the way yes. the structure of the, yeah. of the water. Yes. Right. And, so, and they put notes on the jars and things yep, like that. Yep. That's right. And, yeah, and yeah. one wart of the negative, went literally black. And then the, the water that was given the affirmations of love were crystallized. And yeah. the one that was ignored didn't do anything. Yeah. We are 90% water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah right? Yeah, so, yeah. you know, when, you know, I'm a huge person on good vibrations, yeah. on frequency. You know, yeah. we are all frequency. We were all an algorithm ourselves. Yeah. And if we don't keep our waters in our brain and in our body calm, yeah. We're going to go in, you know, to a monsoon, we're going to go into a tsunami, you know, right. and it's, it's very, very important is uh, I think one of the huge things for anybody out there facing anything is the dialogue with self. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because if you like you said, if you ignore the water. Mm -hmm. So if you ignore yourself, you know, if you ignore if you do not attend to yourself in a, in a positive way. Your, the ramifications are there. Yes. And if you still don't deal with it, you're not going to like the way you feel. And so you're going to go again to the unhealthy behaviors. People want to stop binging and eating junk food. Well, one thing is to get your ducks in a row. 
then you mm-hmm. won't need the junk food so much. Right. You know, it's like, we want to say, Sid, tell me to not eat candy. I go, you already know not to eat candy. How about we change the mindset so that when you're around candy, you go, oh, I'll have a piece, but then I don't, I don't need to eat too much. Yeah. You know, and then you're done. <laughs> you yes. know, and so, and it's like, I've had that actually happen. People go, I had a piece of candy and I didn't overeat for the first time in 30 years, mm. you know, and it wasn't because I told them not to eat candy or even to eat just one. I just helped them get to a place where when they're around the candy, they're in a less stress place and they can make a decision about it. And that's, that's called power. Right. And then they don't, yes. then they don't need me in the picture. They don't need right. me as a, as a guru to stick with them forever right. and ever, you know, I'm and then that's what a good coach is, is to help people have all the skills and the tools they need to maintain their own life and then come back to you if they have a wobbly, Yeah, but yeah, yeah, exactly. you know, but you, you know, it's not to be dependent on you. That's right. Yeah. That's, which, yeah. you know, a lot of the Western medicine is to make you dependent That's right. That's exactly rather right. than yeah. independent. And oh, yeah. uh, um, just on the point of chocolate, there is a chocolate called Macalata and it is a Peruvian uh, cocoa beans completely and utterly vegan gluten-free everything yeah. um it's expensive about five dollars a bar i did a wonderful show on the person who created it but it's one of those things that one piece was so satisfying totally so satisfying that a whole yeah. bar you know maybe you five bucks but it, it will last you oh yeah and uh it, you know it's dark chocolate too which is also yeah. healthy yeah um i think it's it's okay for you to have your treats Heck yes. What I kind mean, of good. treats are you having? And, and the, how often? And how often? And the other thing too is uh, when you, we, we've got to remember the addictiveness of what we're being fed, literally. Yeah. In, oh, yeah. in uh, obviously in the cigarettes, it's all about addiction, getting you hooked. Um, in the foods that we eat, the amount of sugar that's in everything. Salt. And the more you have of it, the more you crave the sugar because you go yeah. for a crash and you crave more sugar. That's right. Less you eat things with the sugar in it, the less you crave the sugar. That's right. So yeah. it's rechanging, you know, your whole mindset, your whole body set. And that takes time. Yeah, it does. And well, persistence. And, yeah, there's a great book called The Pleasure Trap by a guy named Doug Lyle. He and I have been on the kind of the same circuit, so we've met met a few times, but we're wired to take advantage physically wired to take advantage of calories. This this served us very well in the wild when food was scarce and we would find a source and we would eat a lot of it. Well, food companies know exactly what that's about. So they make Kraft macaroni and cheese look very, very orange and they make things very, very salty and they make things very colorful and and in the fake world. Um, And so it is, I want people to take it a little bit easier on ourselves when they say, I can't control myself. It's like, you're eating French fries. Nobody can control, like it is designed to light your head on fire, right? So we can, we can, we can get mad at ourselves about that. Or we could say, okay, this is a drug. It's not really food. So what would I do around drugs? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and I honestly, like when I teach nutrition classes, I go, don't think about that stuff as food. I call it technology. And so, and I, and I don't tell people not to eat it. I just go recognize it as technology. Even the animals we raise for food, they're technology. They're, chickens can't fly that we've, we've bred, right? They, we make them into science experiments. We inject them with antibiotics and hormones. And then we do the same thing with plants where we take an olive, which is healthy and take the oil out of it. And now it's junk food. Fine. Just acknowledge it. I don't, I don't eat, I eat technology as well. But the question is, do you recognize it as such? And then can you make moves to say, okay, I I need to put this in my life just in this amount so that it doesn't tank my overall energy. And it's a treat. Mm. If you do a treat every day, it becomes less of a treat. I asked a friend of mine once who smoked a pack a day of cigarettes. I said, do you enjoy cigarettes? He goes, no, because he just smokes all day. It lost, it lost the treat of it. You know, it's like he he just, now he, now he has to do it. And that changes the whole game. Yeah. When you have to do it. I mean, it, our bodies, you know, obviously different blood types and this and that and different type of guts and things. I suit vegetables more mm-hmm. than I do other, which I've come to recognize. You know, I'm a six veggie a night person. I love mm-hmm. my veggies. Um, we need to know our bodies and, and which fuel really does fortify sure. it. Um, but really, when it really comes down to it, it, you know, pretty well everything is on our attitude and gratitude of life. That's right. And if we can get more gratitude in our attitude right more appreciation for the food we eat for mm-hmm. the life that we've been given yeah. for the choices that we can make mm-hmm. you know we would see things from a totally different light you know i feel that it's gone very very way the opulence the entitlement oh yeah i know you know i've got to have you know i'm entitled yeah. to it and it's yeah. like Mm, I don't like that word entitled. Well, how many how many people in the modern world say how many people in the modern world go, I'm starving? 
Yes. Like, no, you're not starving. You yeah. could go literally five days without eating and your body's going to be just fine. Like it's, it, and it's just this expectation of like, if I have a little bit of discomfort, a little growl in my stomach, I need food and I need it now. And that's yeah. not feeding. That's not doing well for us. It's not, it's yeah. not doing well for us. We're not getting happier and healthier. Yeah. You know, and, and we're getting, le- yeah. So my first two books were like more health and happiness. The new book is really more about health, happiness, rather. It's more happiness focused. There's no, almost no, nothing about food in the entire book because I realized that if we set our sights on health first and foremost, we can get into things like diets. But if we set our sights on happiness first yes. and foremost, then we will use how we eat as a tool to serve us in the happiness realm. We will use exercise as a tool to serve us in the happiness realm. And then we'll be less apt to get into things like militancy and rigidity because they don't make us happy. And so yeah. I realized that was a, there was a need for that. And I, you know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> We're a spaceship. Yeah. Right. We, uh, and we can go where no one has gone before. Right. And what food is, is a fuel. Mm-hmm. Now that what nature has done is given such d- delights in that food, in mm-hmm. that fuel. So we're not just putting in one, you know, regular octane. We're yeah. putting in, you know, f- I mean, when again, if you eat with appreciation and you eat w- with just those wonderful flavors and foods exciting you, again, it's going to optimize you. That's right. Uh, but it is here to to help this vessel explore mm-hmm. that's right yeah and we are exploratory creatures yeah, we are. we're wondrous creatures we're creative creatures yeah and if we could step more into that creativity into that wonderment yeah and and look at food i, I love food i love going out to eat i love food i love yeah. flavors yeah. um and i appreciate it when i eat it and me i appreciate too. what it's doing for my body but it is there to fuel me to be able to go and do what I really want to do. And I think an awful lot of people are unhappy because, of quote, quote, they haven't found their meaningful purpose. Uh-huh. They, you know, they haven't discovered what their instrument is in life, yes. how to play it or which orchestra to bring it to. Yes, that's right. So that's where we need to get to first, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think so, too. I talk about passion a lot. People want to sit back and let them, they want it to bang them over the head. It's like, no, you you get, you find out things about what you want to do. You find out where your passion is by engaging. Yes. And, and, and by just, and by moving and deciding. Yes. yes. And I can't decide what to do. Yeah, part- exactly. Participating <laughs> yeah. in your life and in the world. Yes. And that's how things open up. It's not a waste yes. of time to make a wrong decision if you make a decision. Gosh, no. No, then you learn. You go, oh, wrong decision. Let me move on, move, move on this way. And I learned something about myself. I knew I don't want to do that thing. I'll do this thing instead. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and I think to, I think food is a great tool. There's yeah. are there are foods that don't fuel the ship, mm. and they just maybe paint the ship and make it look pretty. But yes. but, we, but we don't do that. We don't need those all the time, no. you know. And so we want the food that tastes good, but also gives us the longer. I always say that people who sit down to eat a Big Mac from McDonald's and a salad are both doing self care. They're both taking care of themselves. One is more of in the moment. It's mm-hmm. a treat. You get the hit. One of them. The salad tastes good, but it doesn't taste as good as the Big Mac necessarily for most people, but it, it's good enough because it also gives you long-term health and energy past the time that you eat it. So it's how you balance those two kinds of models of self-care. Yeah. Are the doing the quick in the moment self-care most of the time? Well, then you're doing drugs and alcohol or the drug of junk food, or you're doing more self-care acts that are long lasting and long view kinds of things. And, and, you, and you balance those things out. Um, we are very, very addictive. Yeah, yeah oh, nature's we like happy. Yeah, and it's, you know, whatever is going to make us happy, you know, whatever mm-hmm. pill, whatever food, whatever sure. environment. Um, and, you know, we're going to force ourselves to be happy. And if I, I need this crutch to do it, yep. you know, instead of, you know, happiness and life is an inside out job. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter what is going on exterior, it, it's the interior. That's right. And when you can find that happiness within yourself, and you you have that core strength, that core love, that core yeah. directing you, along with you know the divine. I will say that you know we get that gut instinct. Mm-hmm. Well, how, how, I don't know. My gut is telling me. I call that the soul intuition, mm-hmm. and it resonates with the heart and truth. It mm-hmm. goes to the spirit into action, and the mind will know what it needs to know when it, we need to know it. Mm-hmm. One of the things we don't do as human beings is allow wisdom to come to us. We have stacks of knowledge. Yeah. But we don't always know how to use that knowledge That's right. That's right. because we're not wise enough to be still to yeah. allow the other intellects in our body to speak to us. That's right. We're too noisy. We have too much noise. Too much I noise. Just, I, yeah, I just reread the book uh, Jitterbug Perfume by a guy named Tom Robbins. Have you ever heard that book? And he talks about it in that book. It's a great novel. It's a really fun novel and there's a lot of stuff going on. But he says at one point, I'm going to paraphrase because I don't have it in front of me, but he said, you have to prepare your mind for wisdom. 
Mm-hmm. And I, and I thought that is, that's the ticket, right? You yes. got to get ready for wisdom. You yes. got to, you got to get ready. And that's where, why I'm such a passionate advocate for small steps, because I am in a place where I want people to have moment because, because they can say, okay, that's all fine, well, and good, Sarah and Sid, but how do I do this in the world? Yeah. I go, you know, they think they've got to shut everything off for right. eight hours a day. And you absolutely don't. You can find moments of silence and moments of solitude and get the same effect. That's what you can get done. And, um, and that, and, and, and you can absolutely make great changes in, in literal minutes a day, um, and, and see how that goes on. But it's, it's, a it's a tough challenge because people want it so bad that they're, they want, they think they're going to have to undo and change everything all at once. And that's usually the opposite of what they need to do. Yes. You know, we talk about eliminating beliefs that don't serve as, you know, eliminating the past. The past is, it's your tutorial. Mm-hmm. Right. And you can look at your past and go, oh, my God, that was a bad lesson. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, yeah. and you can look at another one and go, you know, oh, that was a rough lesson. But yeah. my God, did I learn a lot? Glad I did. Yeah. Right? And, and it's what have you learned from it? Because that's what you were applying to your that's next right. steps. That's right. Yeah. How many people said like in the moment, how many times have you, and this happened to me a thousand times where something so-called bad happens in my life. And then years later I go, Oh, I'm so happy that happened yes. because, because that happened, this other thing happened. And then that yeah. other thing, but in the moment you think yeah. the world's falling apart. <laughs> this, is the wor- yeah, this is the worst thing in the world. I got fired from my job five years later. Like, thank God I got fired from my job yes. because now I was able to find another job and I ended up finding a, uh, you know, a job that I even like better, you know, whatever, right. just, we don't know. And if we can sort of the through, if we can maintain a, a strong through line of us, our real, true, authentic selves throughout that, then whatever happens in the so-called external world, we can sort of understand and maybe have a little more perspective and say, look, this feels not so good in the moment, but let me see how this plays out. Um, and then, and then that's kind of a cool way to live. You know, you kind of go like, well, I wonder what this is going to look like two years from now. Exactly. What, what's this decision? What's this thing going to, what's this thing going to look like two years from now? You know, it's kind of a cool thing. Being wonderment, you know, it's, um, I'm, I'm constantly given sayings and the, the universe gave me one three years ago of, you know, we're, we're going to come and shake you up to wake you up uh-huh. for you to step up and change it up and grow up. And the grow up was a double entente, you yeah. know, as human yeah, beings yeah. stop your tantrums, but also yep. grow up to a higher frequency. Sure, sure. And, you know, for I'm not um, dismissing at all the amount of lives that we've lost, the amount of families that have been shattered because of it. But for those that are surviving through this, it actually has become a gift. It yes. has become a gift of reviewing, of, yeah. of renewing. And so many people have pivoted into another direction. That's right. And saying, you know, this was the perfect pause for me. That's right. To really look at, am I happy at doing what I'm doing? Um, I can't do it right now because of COVID. Yes. So maybe this is the opportunity for me to go and look at what I really do want to do yeah. and start setting things in motion. That's and right. so, we are always going to get those little gifts in our lives that would look like disasters. Mm-hmm. There's a wonderful Celtic room called Haglas and it's disruption. Whenever I used to get it, I go, no. And yeah, I yeah. realized you have to have chaos and disruption yeah. before you can have calm and order. That's right. Right. And it's okay. It's a clearing out yeah. in order you, to set the pl- platform for a new. That's right. If you shut down, if you try to shut down and avoid all the chaos, mm. then you're, you're a shut down person. Yes. And so, what, so what it means is you will be shut down to the good stuff too. Yes. And, and that's a tough pill to swallow. We've got to, yeah. if we're going to be extremely happy in our lives, we have to deal with the fact that there's going to be extreme sadness too. Yes. And, 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 and then that, that, and then that it's okay. Have you ever heard, I've heard multiple times stories of people who have had cancer and gone through it. And they're like, this is the best thing that ever happened to me. It, Numerous it, people it, I've interviewed on that, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. the gift yeah, yeah. of cancer. Yeah. Yeah. Thing, Literally. Yeah. It's like yeah. the weirdest thing. Like I'm so glad yeah. I had the heart attack. Why? Yes. Because it was a kick in my butt. Yes. I call that the it, cosmic two by four. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, all, it's, exa- it's exactly yeah. right. It's like, yeah. it, it gave me this moment yeah. and it seems so crazy. You're happy you had cancer and they're like, I wouldn't wish it on anybody, but right. I'm really happy I had it. And we're like, oh my gosh. I mean, just think about that for a second. Yes. How profound that is. If somebody is happy that they got deathly ill. And that they got through it, they get to all of a sudden make those decisions. And as we started our conversation, it's like, how can we help people not get to that point? You know, right. to, to, to grasp that and hold on to that idea without letting it get so bad. Yeah. You know? And, you know, we, we, we all get, you know, the tap on the shoulder from the universe, you know, um, no, you're going in the wrong direction. Mm, mm-hmm. Maybe you should change the direction. Sure, sure. Um, hello. Yeah, you yeah. know, and then it's like whack, you know. Are you yeah. Yeah. And we want to, before we get to the wackaroo, but you know, what I have found is that whatever wackaroo we do get, it's, it's always that gift um, because getting through the process is the key. Mm-hmm. 
finding our strength, finding our courage, realizing yes. we're so much more able. Yes. Right. What's yes. really important. Yes. And and getting through to the other side and then realize, gosh, I have all these abilities and these yeah. gifts. Didn't know now. I had them. Yeah. I never knew I had them. Yeah. Now what am I meant to do with them? Well, we as human beings are meant to be in service of uh -huh. each other. So now you have a service of a skill and a tool because you went through the process uh -huh. that other people can relate to uh -huh. because they're going through it and you can really help them. That's right. Right. How and great. So it, it's it, this is the premises of, of all of my podcasts really of people that have taken that redirect because they were uh -huh. willing to go through the process and that's life uh -huh. be willing to go through the process of life yes, it is not paint by numbers yeah it is not living up to society's expectation of popularity or rich and famous or, or you're only valid if you're this or that. Yeah, sure, right? sure. It is knowing your inner self, the truth, the true abundance and beauty of who you are and what you're here to do and whom you're here to serve. That's exactly right. Yeah, I mean, it's exactly right. We have gotten swept up into this idea that we're popular because we have Facebook followers and right. not because we're doing living our lives on our terms. And it's a sad thing. It's not making people, you know, tend to, I quoted in my new book, um, uh, a study that was written about in the Atlantic, but one of the leading causes of death of 10 to 19 year old kids in the United States is, is suicide. Mm. And a lot of that is attributed to social media, to, to actual social isolation. One of the, one of the truths yes. in my, in my new book is called um, social media ain't social. Mm -mm. And, you know, so ki kids are more isolated, not about kids, but it's us. We're isolated, yeah. isolated from physical interaction from, and now with the pandemic, but you know, look, we, you and I get to look at each other and we're miles and miles away. It's pretty right. cool. Yes. Um, but social media has got, has become this filter between us and a, and a human and human connection. So we're mm -hmm. isolated and we think we're being social because we have 15 million followers on YouTube and it, it's not adding up, you know, it's not adding up for us. It's yeah. Not I mean, in the case in point, let's look at the Cardassians. You know, you've, yeah. oh, I know. you've got um, the Cardassians uh, um, divorcing. They're worth two billion. Uh -huh. They have trillions of followers. Yeah. H how happy has that made them? I know, I know, I know. Yeah. I you know, know, and it's I, like, yeah. it, again, going back to interaction, there's nothing wrong with social media if you use it properly. That's right. And you, you use it to have a conversation with someone. Somebody sure. posts something, you make a comment, and from uh -huh. that comment comes a conversation. Uh -huh. It's interaction. Right. If we cannot physically meet and have that interaction, we can do it this way. Everything is vibrational. Everything yeah. is frequency. Uh -huh. You can still have great connections, but it all comes to connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. How do you use it? Yeah. I mean, how do you I, use I, it? Yeah. I went to the extreme in 2018 just because of the work I do and I quit everything. Mm -hmm. And I did that because I wanted to see what it was like. I wanted to see what the hold was on me. Um, and it was tough. It was like, it, you know, talk about addiction. Those mm -hmm. things are modeled on the way that yes. they drip out likes. It's, it's a very, yeah. very overt, uh, addictive, you know, people, the dopamine hit of seeing how many likes you've gotten, they've, they know how to get that done. I wanted to see what it was like to live without it. And I still to this day say my career took a hit, um, but my happiness got a boost. Yeah. And, uh, and it was a really interesting, um, a really interesting process for me to literally delete. I didn't just stop using it. I deleted my accounts and it was like, I was shaking. It was like a hard mm -hmm. thing. It was like, it was like, it was like a, it was a, you could, I could just know that it was that addictive when I was like trembling yeah. when I hit that, when I hit the return button to delete my Facebook account, it was very weird. I thought, wow, this is kind of interesting, you know? So, um, yeah, I don't advise people to quit social media necessarily, but I think what, what you said was right on the money, which is how do you use it? What part, mm -hmm. I call, you know what I do? I call it mental nutrition, what we feed our minds. Yes. So yes. just like in the physical nutrition food realm, there is junk food, mental food and healthy mental food. Yes. So I would put social media in the less than healthy, mm -hmm. uh, especially the way that you use it. How much of it are you feeding yourself? Like how much junk food are you eating day to day? I have clients who are on social media for four, four, four or five hours a day. They want to talk about, diet, but the stress of being on social media and arguing with people all day is making their digestion crazy. Yes. <laughs> you know, and I can't fix that. No. You know, with diet. I no. can help it a little bit, but it's not going to turn it around unless you actually turn around the source problem, which is that you are in vitriol right. all day arguing with people on social media. But that's very different than using social media to stay in touch with a friend who lives miles away. I think that's amazing. I mean, a lot of my wonderful listeners. That's right. You know, exactly. Like it's, and, it's incredible. Uh, and, uh, you know, their support is wonderful. And, you know, I'll put out a show and they'll take it and they'll share it and they'll exactly. converse about it. Exactly. And that that's is the best part about it. Yeah. And that's like yeah. a human, human to human great thing yeah but so many people are just yeah. in conspiracy theory yelling oh, screaming oh, oh. kind of world and yes. that's and look at twitter i mean 
Yeah. You know, the last four years in the United States has been uh. dominated by Twitter. News organizations weren't even reporting on things. They were reporting on tweets. Yes. And I thought, I this know. is a very weird world that we're living in. They're yeah, reporting on tweet. This person tweeted this today. It's like, oh, my gosh. You know, like, what is happening here? Yeah, I mean, what does that also say about us as human beings that we would believe that over – you know, over a scientist or over yeah. somebody who is oh, a know. professional and bringing us the facts. And I it's, know. it's, you know, it's like, um, there, there was, I'm a Doctor Who fan and there was a great show one time where uh, an, an alien came in and took someone's body and mimicked. So first it would be behind the person speaking and then it would match the person speaking, then be ahead of them. Okay. And it could okay. jump from body to body. And wow. everybody else left in that kind of space train is like, kill them, kill them, kill them. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and the hysteria is out there. Yes. And, and, you know, we look at that and I thought it was brilliantly acted uh -huh. by David Tennant and, and a couple of others. Um, but, but it is also a, a, a real clear example of how ordinary human beings who care about each other, who care yes. about the world, yes buy into the hysteria so uh -huh. quickly right away. and that's what i call that sugar high uh -huh. and this is what the news has and the social media for the last four or five years has been so good at doing out. and you've got highly intelligent people oh yeah buying into QAnon and 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 yeah. everything else and it's like please take a breath switch off yes. from the social media yes. go back to your center core is yeah. it real yeah, well, people, people, and they've interviewed people who've gotten so called gotten out of these things, and right. it is like getting out of a cult. I mean, they go, yes. Whoa, and they kind of wake up, and you realize yeah. that they were sort of shut down for they were just kind of in it, you know, that cult personality kind of thing. And it was like they were so deep in it. And when they get released, it is a release, yeah, like they feel released. They go, oh, My god, I got out, yeah, you know, and so it is that it is that level, it's, yeah. Trevor uh, Noah had on a, a woman last year, I think Sarah Jane says something, or Sarah says, um, she's a teacher. And uh, she decided that she wanted to actually put out facts. And she's just started doing it on Instagram. And now it's on Facebook. And it's, uh, she will look at all the facts coming from the sources mm -hmm. that are trained to sure. look at the facts. And then she would put that out there and people would argue with her. And then she would come back with, well, where's your base fact? Right. This yeah, is the base fact. And then people go, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. okay. And it's so, you know, it's not, the whole Quinon thing of what was it? Uh, Oprah Winfrey, um, Hillary Clinton, and Tom Hanks uh, sucking the blood out of newborn babies, babies right? Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and no. it's like, please, folks. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if it sounds so stupid, it is stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And yeah, no, it's it's a it's a it's a weird thing because on one side you have sort of rationality, mm. fact based, and the other side you have gut feeling. Yeah. You know, not not in the good way, but in no, the, no, no, no. Hysteria. The, the, I should think it's a head base. thing. Yeah, it's, it's a, a it's a lizard. Thing. It's lizard brain. Yes, it's, it's a survival. Yeah, you know that kind of survival level yeah. stuff. Get him before he gets me. Yeah, that's right. And it's very yeah. hard to have a conversation yeah. when oh. the person's like, "Well, I've I've read all these science. I've read, yeah. I've listened to the scientists and I've talked about." It. And the other person goes, "Well, I got nothing except for fear." And some would tell you that right. they're eating, they're eating babies. Yes. It's like, how do you have that conversation? It's like, whoa, yes. you know. Right. So that's that's a lot of the divisiveness in the states and, right and now. And you know I that state of beingness is so detrimental to not only their psyche but their health. Oh yeah. No, and, no doubt. And, and of course, their relationships and everything they do in life because they're living constantly in that hurricane of fear and hysteria. That's right. That's right. And you cannot sustain that for any no. length of time without something breaking down. That's right. Yeah. Our, our stress mechanism and stress response is brilliant when used sparingly. Right. But when we are in a heightened state of stress, we will see the physical breakdown of our bodies and minds. It, there's just no getting around it. We have not adapted to the stress no. of the modern world. And so if we don't take actual action in our lives to maintain our stress most of the time, allow allowing for spikes when they happen, we lose. And we're seeing it. And we're seeing it in the health of our species. And we're seeing it in the way that yeah. we interact. And that's the side. But there's a, so, there's a solution. You know, the good news is there's things that we can do about it. It's super cool that way. You know, we yeah. have creative minds that we can apply and, 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 we can, and we have consciousness that we can take action based on and really change the game for ourselves and our families and our friends and the world. Mm -hmm. It's like the algorithm, right? What we feed will grow. Yeah. So if you feed things that are more rational, more logical, more manageable, mm -hmm. less stressful, yeah. then happiness will grow. Well, that's right. Health will come out of that yeah, happiness. Pretty, pretty easy equation. Right. right. And, in, yeah. and it's, you know, we, we love to overcomplicate things, but really when it comes down to it, it's simplicity works. That's Let right. us look at our children. Let's look at our puppy dogs. Mm -hmm. They're See living they in do. the moment. They're living <laughs> in joy. Yeah. Right. Why can't we 
do the same. What is it yeah. that I'm an adult now? I can't yeah. do that. Yeah, exactly. No. You can't be a kid. You know? Of course no. you can be a kid. Yeah, Just yeah, get yeah. silly buggers, please. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Go and do something silly, you know, because obviously not hurting anyone else, but it's, um, um, I'm a true colors coach. So, you know, the four key strength personality traits mm -hmm. and and each personality trait looks at something mm -hmm. from a different perspective and i think another thing that we need to do is you from your perspective it's right from mm -hmm. that perspective it's right now how mm -hmm. about we take all four perspectives put them on the table and look at what is what do we all agree on uh-huh yeah, yeah. What's right what do we thread? the common thread because yeah, yeah. now you can start from that common thread having right. a conversation instead of an argument that's right right away right out of the right away. yeah 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 it's like we all love our kids we all want to be happy we all love our families i don't care what side of the aisle you're on in the stage right. or whatever else craziness let's start with the common thread that we're trying to eke out a good life here and and start with that you know and see where it grows from there so, good stuff I mean, life could be so simple but we as you know we talked about management you know uh managing our stress mm -hmm. you know um, managing our lives managing the chaos around us mm -hmm. and i live in chaos all the time it's it's part of my wind you know uh, that, yeah, I, yeah. that i live in sure. uh, it, it it creates my order and so you have to know you know some people are just so very orderly everything must be in its place mm -hmm. and chaos is a detriment to them yes, yes and you know others the chaos is is the creativity yes and we need to respect who we are mm -hmm. and what our process is but mm -hmm. that again is that inside job and we aren't going to find that if we're living the exterior life or That's if right. we're substituting our happiness with junk food, with binge watching, with being online or on the phone all the time. Yeah. Moderation. Yeah. And exploration. Yeah. What level works for you? Yes. You know, what level works for you? And we may, we may think that we're binge eaters, let's say, but we may not actually be. And it takes some thought and solitude to get to the point where I say, you know what, that actually isn't who I am. Right. And I got to bring, I got to bring this, you know, getting to know yourself on that level and stop defining yourself by your so-called bad habits of your past yeah. and just saying, well, who actually am I? Regardless of how I've been behaving, who am I really? And I do this with clients. I don't help people change into new people. I help them live life on their terms that they yes. just got to find out what those terms are. That's you know? right. Yeah. If you talk about gut in, you know, yeah, it's exploratory. Find yes. that out, you know, yes. discover what that is. And it's very cool to see people transform in that way. They get to really understand who they are finally for the first time in 50 years sometimes. And then, right. they, get to start, then they get to start behaving that way a little bit more each day. Mm -hmm. And it's a very cool thing to watch. And it becomes, it becomes their pattern, which is a healthier pattern. That's right. Right. And that yeah. healthier pattern, you know, rather like the year of the ox, you know, yeah. it's busy plowing its field. It's, it's solid. It There's no bells and whistles to yeah. it. You know, yeah. it's yeah. not Nothing sexy. Fancy. It's the tiger. Nothing you know, yep. but it's solid and, and yeah. there must be some part of us. And, and as I said, I'm very much a cosmic wind person, you yeah. know, and grounding is something that's always been rather challenging for me, but we uh -huh. have got to make sure that our roots are strong, that our tree trunk is, is really good and sturdy, and sure. that our branches are able to Can, move. Flexible. That's right. Yeah. And, flexible. Yeah. and that, that but we, we do need that, that, um, that rooting. Uh -huh. And uh, very often, you know, when we're, when we are eating wrong or our stress is there is because we don't have that grounding. We don't have that routine That's right. That's the and hard we don't it. feel secure in ourselves. That's right. Yeah. And then we try to control the wind that's blowing yes. our leaves, but it, 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 we don't need to control the wind that's blowing. No. Our leaves. We need to establish the strong roots and that, right. and that's the, that's the hard work of it. Yeah. You know, that and, is the hard work of it. And we can flap away in that wind with, without any worry, right? Yeah, exactly. Because and we can enjoy it strong. and exactly. we, can find, we can find joy in it yes. we, where we never would have seen joy before. No, no, we were and, just, you know, uh, yeah, it's blowing out of control. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. You're, no, no. You're, don't worry. Your roots are strong. Yes, your tree trunk's solid. Yeah, you can, yeah. you can flap away. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly yeah. right. right on the yeah. So, so cool. attitude is a huge thing. And as you yeah. said in your books, it's less about the diet. Mm -hmm. It's, it's the emotional nutrition. That's right. Mindset That's nutrition. Yeah. Uh, the, there's the spiritual and the psychological nutrition. Yeah. And before you do anything, I, I did a whole series on climate change, but it was around the mindset of climate change before yeah. we actually do climate change. You're right on the money. Because yeah. if you can't change the mindset, you're not going to make any other changes out no. there. No. You right. Yeah. We know what's wrong out there, but very often we don't know how to put it right. We're so busy being inundated by what's wrong out there. We don't realize we have the empowerment within us to put it right. Yes. And it starts with us, yes. within us, yes. for us, yes. because then we bring what's right out into the world. That's right. Yeah. 
I call it holistic self-interest in mm. my first book, holistic self-interest. It's not greed. No. It's, it's taking care of yourself in a way that is, you understand that you're part of a whole, you're part of a family, you're part of a, of a community, you're part of a society, you're part of a world and, it, and treat yourself. You, you can't put yourself as a parent. You can't put yourself on the back burner, like we said, no. but as a human being, you can't either. If you want change in the environment, change your own habits yes. and see how that influences people, how you're living your life. Not what you say, Mm-hmm. Not how you get in someone's face, but how do you live? And they go, oh, that's interesting how you're living. You're looking good and you're feeling, you know, you, you take care of yourself in a very cool way. Um, what is that? What are you doing? You know, and how do you take care of yourself? Make it start with you, just as you said. It's totally right on the money. You know, we, we are the seeds that we water. Mm-hmm. You know, what kind of growth do you want to see there? Yeah. And, you know, don't look to your past and go, oh, my God, you know, you should have seen the weeds I grew there. Yeah. You know, it was what mindset were you in at that time? That's right. That grew that. Are yeah. you in that? I'm certainly nowhere the same person I was 10 years ago. I know. Or 20 years ago. And right. that's the thing about until the day I exit this for body, yeah. you know, it is about growth. It yeah. is about exploration and constantly, yeah. you know, constantly rising up to that higher, higher, higher vibration, which we yeah. can do. I love the fact that your whole nutrition plan is less about food uh, because you know what to eat when your mind has finally got there. Right? I, have clients, I have clients change their diets in a good way before I've even talked about nutrition. Right. I mean, I can make new tw- tweaks as a nutritionist, but most people know, have a general idea yes. of how to eat well. They really, really do. Yeah. And they want to make it about the diet plan, but it's really about that. I've had people change their diets. They walk in the room and they go, I didn't feel like snacking because yeah. we've worked on, they're writing their novel again for the first time in five years. Right. And they got other things to think about and yes. they love that. And food, it's like, it's not about food. It's how you relate to food. Yeah. Right? yeah. And so, yeah, I'm a nutritionist. And I'm like, listen, eat a little less than healthy this weekend because you're holding on too tight. (laughs) Yes. You know, you're holding on too tight and you're going to burn out like you've done 15 times before you came to me. So let's not do this thing again. Yeah. Because you don't. Extreme. Yeah. 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 Because you don't want, you don't want to live that way. No. You do not want to live that way. You know, and and like I said, I'm 100% plant based 18 years, but I definitely do not eat 100% healthy. You know, right. French, fry, French fries are plant-based and Scotch whiskey is, is plant-based and all sorts of, yeah, me, I'm a big Scotch guy, right? <laughs> I am a huge yeah. Scotch person. Okay. Oh, then I knew, I knew, I knew where there was something. So, so I will, I've had, you know, my old podcast was called the Approaching the Natural Podcast. I did 222 episodes. It's a health-based, you know, health and happiness. But I drink Scotch when I would do the podcast and talk about it. Mm-hmm. And I got criticized. Well, you, you're a nutritionist. Like, I don't think that's a good message. I say, oh, well, I disagree with you. I think that's the best message yes. because I don't drink Scotch all the time. It's right. a treat. And if you are holding yes. so tight that you can't break your diet, you're not doing something to serve you. Sorry, I, but it's true. And that's just what, yes. you know. And you know, coffee in the mornings. I'm, hey, Sarah, I roast my own beans. Oh, good girl. Sorry, good guy. I, roast, <laughs> I, roast, I, roast, I roast my own beans. And, right. and, so, and I love coffee, but do I drink it all day? Nope. No, I drink. I found it. a level. I found a level that I can fit for me. I drink it in the morning so that yes. I can sleep, sleep better and, and call it a day. Yeah. But I love it. I have two of these in the morning. That's, the rest of the time is water. So yeah, yeah, that's me plain too. water or lemon water. That's exactly what I do. Yeah. And, and so and, I, I love it. I don't want to not, I have the people, I can't drink coffee. It's like, okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Again, well, extreme. Yeah. The moment you go to, I can't, the body yeah. goes into, why not? Why yeah. not? Yeah. You, you're you go, denying me. <laughs> yeah. If you go to, I don't want to, different right. ballgame. Yes. Different ballgame. If yeah. you don't want to, good. If you yeah. think you can't, uh-oh. I mean, you know, my daughter and her husband are 100% vegan and they're diehards, right? Mm-hmm. And, and and good for them. You know, they've yeah, built the best if environment a house they can. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm obviously from a different generation. Sure. And, but I, you know, I look at it this way. I am the 80-20. I'm not going to beat myself up for when I go 20%. Right. I'm yeah, not exactly. going to do that because again. most of, because um, I don't want the stress or now and again I know I need maybe the protein or something but or I'm out for dinner and it's hard uh-huh. to find a good vegan meal. Um, whatever the point is, is I'm not going to apologize for it. Right. Right. Um, because right. I know that I'm the eighty percent most uh-huh. of the time, and if I'm off on the twenty percent, that's okay. Enjoy <laughs> it. Yeah. We can literally change the texture of the food by the energy we give it. You're, you're darn right. Yeah, and moderation isn't a fixed percentage. It's right. what you find fits into your life. Yes. Um, and so it's like, you know, it's is it 80, 20? Is it 90, 10? Is it depending yeah. on what happens in your life where yeah. you start feeling less sick or more sick rather? So you go, okay, let me adjust the percentage a little bit because I'm not feeling well. It's being fluid. It's being adaptable. Yeah. Right. And so that's what's that's what being a successful human being is. It's not a ro- robot. It's a per- person who's adaptable and versatile. And ha- like you said, has the strong roots and can make adjustments as needed. And that's uh, that's the task. We can all do it. Yeah. 
you know, oh, it's okay. It's easy for you. Yeah, it's easy no, no. for all of us when we know how. Yeah, and also I would say it's hard sometimes too. Yes. And that's okay. Like, what? Don't be afraid of hard work. It's right. it, like, like I said, marriage isn't easy. No. So, so you people have to manage it. Like, yes, you have to, you have to pay attention. I have a great yes. marriage. Yes. I have a great marriage, but I, we work our butts off. I've been married right. 26 years. I work my butt, we work our butt off on each other. Uh, yes. We separately work on ourselves so that yes. what we bring to the marriage is, is, is better. As a parent, it's very hard work. I work on, do a lot of work on myself so that I can be the father that I believe I am in deep down. That's, that takes work and attention. I can't phone that in. I'm I have a bad, yeah. extremely pleased that you had yeah. mentioned that because I was one of those, and especially from that generation, you know, got married and then immersed my entire self into the marriage sure. uh, and became the sacrifice, became the servitude yeah. and at the expense of myself. That's right. I have a wonderful picture I put out for people where it's um, man and woman facing each other, but with one face. There is the circle of you. Mm -hmm. There's the circle of your partner, uh -huh. and then there's the circle that you create together. That's right. And that circle that you create together is only as strong as your individual circles. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You have to do the work on yourself. Yes. Yeah. And I, I love when my wife takes time for herself. I love that she exercises for herself. I do mm -hmm. that for me. She eats well for herself. I do it for me. And we allow that to bring, we know that that affects the way that we bring our own stress management definitely affects our, our marriage, you know, right. and, and me as a parent and her as a, as a, as a mom. And so it's uh it is the, again, we come back to a thousand times. It's attention. It's attention to detail. It's attention to it's managing your life. If you don't manage yeah. your life, you can fake it for a while, but it's going to come by you. By you at some point. Please do not live by society's expectation of what yeah. you should be yeah. or somebody else's expectation. Some picture, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, your parents or, you know, your school or, or other people around you. The whole thing about life is that wonderful self discovery of who you are, what you're here to do, what is your greatest gift, how uh -huh. can you serve others with it? Yeah. And that is a beautiful journey to have. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's how do you ride that roller coaster? Uh -huh. You know, with, yeah, yeah. without without the fear, yeah, exactly. uh, and get to enjoy it. You know, it, yeah. you get to enjoy the struggle times because it becomes a challenge mm -hmm. that you know you can get through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? No, I know, I know. And then afterwards, you go, "Oh, phew, that was yeah. a rough one, but I did yeah. it. I did, I did I it. it. <laughs> I got through it. Yeah, I was test. Yeah. I was tested, and I got yes. through it. Yeah. Super yeah. Cool. And you feel kind of more worthy in your life. I know. So, yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's not like. Um, a lot of the times, you know, uh, something that's happened to someone that's been traumatic will show its face again, you mm -hmm. know, triggers. Triggers mm -hmm. doesn't mean you're going back there. Yes. It just means whatever situation you're in right now has triggered that memory. Look at that memory and go, I am so uh, happy you're in the past. Yes. Yeah. Thank goodness. <laughs> You've got Stay nothing there. to do in my yeah, future. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly right. You stay right where you are. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, I, I see you. Oh, my God. I, mean, I look at myself and what I've gone through in life and I go, Wow, I survived that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I became yeah, yeah. something better because Stronger of and it. better. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like, you know, it's I am not that person anymore because I was willing to go through the process of self-discovery. That's right. To become yes. who I am today. And am I perfect? No. If you no. start looking at perfection, you're going to let yourself down. Yeah. Be beautifully imperfect. That's yeah, because we're humans. Unique. The yes. perfect hu the perfect human is imperfect because that's our design. Yes. So if you want if you want to be a perfect human, accept the mistakes and the imperfections that are coming because they yes. are. And so we can, ro otherwise we're a robot and that doesn't sound fun to me. And even a robot is not going to have everything. Yeah, right? no, no. It's, so the robot it's a question of have, what we put in it, what we yeah, program they in it. Yeah, they don't, have emo they don't have emotion. They don't have feeling. Right. They don't have depth of experience. They, and we don't want to be that. We don't want to be so shut off that we look perfect to the outside, but right. in, 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 inside we're holding on so tight that we can't express anything. It's, yeah. it's a tough way to live. Our so. soul wisdom cannot speak through a closed heart. Yeah. And whether our hearts have been hurt or not, we can't shut them down. Yeah. When we live from a heart base, heart for ourselves, heart for our loved ones, heart mm -hmm. for life, yes. the love of life, yeah. uh, always finding something to find joy in, mm -hmm. then we have got an open heart and that wisdom will always come through. Yeah. It will always guide us to the knowledge we need to know. Um, so many people close that heart down because of, they've been hurt yes or the pain yeah yeah you have to push through that pain I you know. have to open that heart again yeah. because that's your connection to yourself everything. and everything around you everything yeah that's exactly right absolutely 
wonderful. So this new book, when is this coming out? Uh, the published date is April 13th on Rare Bird Books. And it's called, yeah, Six Truths, Live by These Truths and Be Happy, Don't and You Won't. That's a right. kind of a, it's supposed to be funny. Uh, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> a little jokey. Uh, I try to use humor again to just make mm. things accessible and fun. And let's just kind yes. of simplify Lighten everything. up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the book is very like light in its writing. It's chunked up into sections. You can just grab and, and read a section here and there. And and, and um, yeah, so it's 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 funny. And, uh, it's, well, anyway, it's supposed to be funny. Whether people like my sense of humor, I have no idea. Again, I don't have control over that. Um, no, no, no. <clears> I mean, that's the thing is, do people partake of your dish or not? You yeah, know, yeah and, I don't know. It's, I don't it's know. not going to be, you know, one size fits all you're going yeah. to be speaking to the people who are ready to hear you yeah some people review my, have reviewed my books oh he's really funny and other people go i don't like his humor like, right. okay you know like yeah. not, my, yep. not my problem not my problem no, i'm no, happy no. With, i'm happy with it. it's got the message i wanted to be and, and, exactly. and enough people connect to it that i'm a happy guy so. right. and that's the same with podcasting right we exactly put it right. out there and let yeah. let's see where it happens and yeah, see exactly. what happens and right. and those that receive it it means they relate to it but you right. know, if you try and relate to everyone oh. you, you're just not going to happen you're never going to be authentic authentic. Yeah, no. Right? You so you you've got to be true to who you are and understand yeah. that there's always going to be somebody out there that relates to you. That's right. That hears you. Because if they don't humans. hear you, they're just not on your channel. That's exactly right. That's, That's right. all you it is. Nothing you can do about it. Exactly. Nothing you can do about it. So yeah. serve those that are ready to be served. Cool. How do people listen to your podcast? Um, how do they find you for your services? Okay. And well, where do they uh, find your books? Cool. Yeah. So the books are everywhere. They're in stores and you know, they're published. So Amazon and Barnes and Noble and, and indie bookstores too, um, the three books. And then my podcast is What Sid Thinks. That's everywhere, iTunes and Stitcher and everywhere you would find your podcasts. Um, SidGarzaHillman.com is my main website. Through there, you can get to my YouTube channel and everything else, but you can search for me on YouTube. I've been on YouTube for a long time. And then um, I do an online program, which is a habit change program called SmallSteppers.com. And I also do a private um, intensive with... Uh, clients uh, privately, which is called smallstepintensive.com. So there's four places you can truck around and check it out. And uh, yeah, that's it. Excellent. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's, we're not here for somebody else to live our life. That's right. We're here to live this gift of life. And, you know, especially in this last year where we have lost so many people to yeah. this this horrible virus and so many lives have been shattered because of it this is the time to step into gratitude that's right right it is time notice to what step, you have notice what you have you know yeah. it stop complaining you know, about you know when people would say i'm shut down i can't i said you haven't got bombs dropping on you yeah yeah you haven't no, got nazis totally. at the door you're yeah. not starving yeah right you know you've been asked to wear a mask stay in wash yeah. your hands and, and, and use your common sense. Yeah. I made a joke yeah. on my podcast, but I don't know if it offended anybody. I hope not. But I was like, this is the best time to have a pandemic. We have technology. We can, yes. connect. We, I, can I can see my parents. Yes. It's not ideal. I'm not in the same room, but I get to see them and talk to them. Imagine if we didn't have this kind of ability to connect, we would be in a very, very worse place. It's horrible what it is, but man, you know, you can take online courses, you can talk yes. to friends and family, you can do lots of things that you couldn't do in 1918 when we had the last one. Yeah, and we can and, have a baby uh, shower. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. So, you know, so it's like, I just, I just worked on a, uh, I work at a resort, I head up a wellness center at a resort called the Stanford Inn Resort in, in Mendocino. We had an elopement, just two people. So it was socially distanced with a mask, but I held up a phone for the bride. It was her phone on a zoom so that her whole family could be at their, at their elopement. Yeah. It's not ideal. Of no. course not. But is it amazing? Yes, it's amazing. They got, got to see their daughter get married in right. a time where, where people can't be in the same room. That's incredible. you know. Yes. And so if we don't grasp onto those, we, we let the world take us down and we can't let that happen. And you know, the, I think the reason why this is global and not just hitting one country or two countries is the fact that we do have this technology that has brought us all together. Yes. Right. We're all yes. in this together. And yes. some countries are doing better than others. Yes. Um, but you know, while we're busy pointing finger at government saying government's not doing, three mm -hmm. are pointing back at us and going, What are we doing? What are we doing? Exactly. Because oh. whatever happens out there, you know, this is the reason why this show is called Your Health is Your Choice. Yes. Right? Your yes. mental health, your your physical health, your, your uh, spiritual health, everything is your choice because it's how you interact with self. That's right. How you participate in your own life. Yes. That is what you are bringing out into the world so yeah, you right. want to see a better world then you've got to live a better life yes that's right that's right do the work 
do, do the, the work, work. Yeah. right? And it's not hard when you get into the routine of it. No, and that's the initial thing is weird, but yes. then you do it more often and even the work gets less work. Yes, yeah. exactly. But, and then yeah. a crisis comes up. Well, you know how to handle it. Been, been here before, seen it. Been yeah, here before, yeah, done yeah, it. Yeah. Okay, now what about which, which ingredient will help with this situation? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And you're yeah. not overwhelmed. Exactly. And, or you know how to take that deep breath yep. yeah. <laughs> and, and go, okay. Yeah, I can right. face this. That's right. Right, because we can cool. face anything. We are extraordinary creatures. We all, we really are. Yeah, but when we've we sold ourselves so short. We know, really I have. Know. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely right. This cool has been stuff. wonderful having you on here. Thank what you. What a joy! So much. What a joy! I wish we had tackled the scotch thing early on because it would have changed yeah. the whole nature of the. <laughs> I would have had a glass here. <laughs> <laughs> Bit early. <laughs> I know exactly what I was going to say. Is it two or there? Anyway, yes. no. You're, it was really fun being on your show, and thanks for having me. Uh, really my pleasure. Fun. Good Scotchman, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like minds. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And and you know that's the thing is whether it's scotch, whether it's wine, or whether it's beer, it's again moderation. Yeah. Don't use it as the crutch. Yeah, exactly. Not a hey, you can partake in anything as long as it beca doesn't become an addictive or a replacement yeah. for yeah. an emotion. That's right. Exactly. So joy, Good fine. Stuff. Go and Good celebrate. Stuff. Have that joy. Cheers. Heck yes. Heck <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And again, the sites are, I'm just going to quickly go back over them again. Glasses on, glasses on. Um, so from Amazon, they can buy both of the books, Approaching the Natural A Health Manifesto. That's one book. Uh, that's yep. one book and then yep. raising healthy parents uh and then the the new book which is the the six, six truths the six truths to be yep. happy or not and uh, of course your podcast that people can go to they can find you on apple or, or any itunes yep. what sid thinks podcast um, mm -hmm. i've got the links right here cool and uh, your site which is sid because and let's spell that uh, s-i-d-g-a-r-z-a hillman dot com oh, man. That's right. And uh, and then the other is small small steppers.com small steppers and com. then small step intensive.com. Excellent. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's there. That's the that's the whole point. Help is always there when yes. you are ready, right? The teacher's ready when you are. Yes. That's right. Right? Exactly. So, uh, be ready because your health is your choice. That's right. <laughs> right? Well so, said. And the healthier you are, mind, body and soul, the more you can contribute to society and the better we see a society grow. 100%. So you're the ingredient that's missing. 100%. Thank you so much for being here, Sid. All right, Sarah. It was a pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Thanks a lot. Until next time, folks, be well. Bye for now. We hope that you enjoyed the show. You will hear many, many shows here at selfdiscoverymedia.com. We have new shows for you out every week. Just find them on our podcast or, or what's new. If you feel that you have something to share that makes a difference in the lives of others, or you too feel that you could be a host, please contact me at info at selfdiscoverymedia.com and we will be glad to speak with you. Have a wonderful day.